Hey, how you going there? It's Nick's user here. So today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Fedora 27. Now, Fedora 27 was released some time ago, and it's been a while since I've produced a video. Uh, the last time I produced a video was actually um, on a algorithm for uh, calculating prime numbers or determining prime numbers. Now I got a little bit wrong with that one, so uh, I'm going to be uploading that uh, again. Uh, in the near future, but uh, for today we're going to take a quick look at uh, Fedora. Uh, now one of the first things I want to tell you about with Fedora is you can either download it from the main website, okay, or and you can choose your particular type like Workstation Server or Atomic, or you can choose, often you can choose your internet, uh, your internet service provider, may have actually a free section which won't contribute to your quota, which is really really handy. Uh, an alternative way actually is to download via uh, the BitTorrent protocol, so it's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, and uh, that way you're actually sharing um, the uh, the file uh, amongst other fellow users. Uh, nothing illegal about that. It's free and open source software. It's promoted uh, with this particular type of software. Um, so you can use the BitTorrent protocol. You can share amongst others, and uh, that way you also take the load off the servers. So in this case, it probably doesn't matter too much with uh, being Fedora being a uh, Red Hat supported project, but with other smaller uh, free and open source projects, uh, this really can actually help them out a bit. So I recommend it. So um, first of all, I want to tell you is that I'm recording this video today on uh, FFmpeg. Now the reason why I do that is just the I suppose it's not so much easy to use, but the results are reliable. Okay, I use a script, and I'm happy to share that script with you guys sometime if you want that. But uh, I should make a note that the, what I'm doing right now is not actually by default supported by Fedora, so I've had to add some libraries and things like that to, to help out. Um, so let's just take a brief look. So we've got uh, Firefox here. So these applications are here um, by default. Okay, I do have a terminal running at the moment, so you wouldn't normally see the terminal there. But, um, but the terminal is available through, uh, through the menu. Um, I actually saw a comment the other day saying that GNOME 3 looks much like TouchWiz and uh, in fact I'd say the only similarity here is this type of icon that uh, TouchWiz used to have. Uh, TouchWiz is a user interface by the way, for those who don't know it's a user interface that's default on uh, the Samsung line of devices including tablets and phones. So uh, we have uh, Evolution here which is going to be your email client. Uh, we have Rhythm Box here which is going to be for playing audio but uh, remember I said before there are some limitations with Fedora and uh, that brings me to my second point. So if you want to be able to play a wide variety of video um, or you know get access to software that's not exactly condoned by the Fedora project due to either uh, licensing restrictions or um, or to do with uh, patents or other legalities uh, there is a site called RPM Fusion and uh, RPM Fusion um, supports uh, additional packages for Fedora and you'll see they also uh, support some editions of Red Hat slash CentOS. So uh, basically what you're doing there is enabling a whole bunch of uh, other packages including VLC and FFmpeg if you want it. Now I compiled FFmpeg by source because I'm familiar with it and I kind of prefer that way of doing things but not everyone wants to do that and uh, this is a great way for people to get um, uh, other free and non-free software that uh, that they might find they need in their use cases. Now I don't recommend the use of non-free software because obviously source code limitations. You can take a look at uh, GNU.org or, uh, or the Free Software Foundation's website regarding this. But um, I understand that people have different use cases and sometimes it's not it's not possible to uh, to use uh, free and open source software purely at times. I have that issue at times with certain things but uh, I try and get around it. Uh, okay so um, we have files. Now files Okay, I think that's kind of a uh, an interesting one to take a look at. Um, now, files used to have a split a, a split pane. It do, it no longer has that. But what you can do, by the way, if you if you need to move files here and there, is you can actually do this. Then you press Control N and create another one. And so, if I really wanted to, I could I don't know. I don't have any particular files that I'm using here that much. But what I can do is I can go into videos, for example. I've just sort of um, grabbed some of my files uh, to do with an upload before, and I can sort of just copy and I could paste there if I wanted to. Okay, so that's one way you can do that. The other way obviously is to use the command line. Okay, so a really basic task that you can do. Now, I really like split painting before. It used to be that you could press F3 and split paint, but due to some bugs and whatnot, they removed it. I've mentioned that quite often in my videos because I'm kind of hope kind of hopeful that if I uh, if I get a subscriber base that's reasonable and I keep 
keep on keeping on about it, hopefully they'll return that feature. I think it was a killer feature, and if you look at the uh, other distributions which are using older versions of Nautilus, uh, which is what files really is, um, you'll find that they actually still include that split painting effect. And also others like Dolphin, which is based on uh, the KDE uh, desktop there, uh, it has that feature. I think it's kind of neat. And uh, although I do use the command line a lot, it's just one of those nice little handy, handy ones to have. So that's files for you, okay? Um, I'm actually going to return to Rhythmbox in a moment because there's something quite interesting about Rhythmbox that occurred uh, since last release. Uh, here's um, the software software manager. Okay. Now I tend to use DNF, which uh, is actually the replacement to Yum. Uh, Some time back there was a replacement that occurred where Yum was basically deprecated and DNF replaced it due to speed reasons and some other other bits and bobs. But hey, if you're not into using the command line, this is a way of getting some apps installed. I've had issues finding certain applications, like if I wanted to find the application, I don't know, um, what would be a good one? PV, PV for example, let's see if, if PV comes up. Because PV is like a, a progression, I don't know, a viewer for uh, piping, piping files and content, like basically a data stream. You pipe it through PV and it gives you a status update of where it's at. And you can See, it's not really, it's not really coming up with it. I think. So that would definitely be found. Uh, well, at least I believe it would be found if I uh, launched a terminal. So let's have a look. So DNF search is how you do things, and then PV. Now there probably there could be quite a number of items that come up just uh, because of the uh, the lack of uniqueness. We'll give that a moment to do its thing. We'll continue while that we uh, while we're waiting. So we'll just, uh, by the way, I just, uh, when I want to split pane, like, not split pane, but split window like that, or sort of move the window to the side, I press the mod key, or windows key, as it's otherwise known, and I can press left, right, and that will, that will do that. Another thing too is if you press the windows key, that opens up this, uh, this menu, this menu system. Okay. So, anyway, um, let's take a look at some of the, oh, I remember now. I wanted to go back to Rhythmbox and show you something, which is quite, quite interesting. You can actually now play, um... Uh, mp3s in Rhythmbox. Now I'm just playing that there and it's actually working, okay? Uh, what you can't do however, still, is uh, other file formats. So if I went into videos and I was to look at this guy here and try and open up with videos, it's going to complain. So I'd, I'd, I'd probably need an RPM Fusion to help out there. Fortunately, actually funnily enough, I installed, as I said to you before, I installed FF um, MPEG and it comes with a tool called FF Play. So if I go FF Play and uh, let's see rcjet.mp4 for example, and it'll play that old video that I did some time back. No problem at all. Audio and video just there. So that's one way of getting around things. If you really need to play something like that, that's a low-level uh, tool to to do that. I'm more than happy to show you how to do that sometime. So here we go, we've got a standard set of applications, you've got boxes for virtualization. Now I'm not going to go through virtualization today because that's an extensive topic in, in and of itself. But you do have basic other applications, you know, you've got a calendar, but the thing is with about, about this calendar is when you've got the likes of a uh, likes of evolution which is a pretty much feature complete um, office tool for communication it, it has a calendar in there from what I recall there's not much need for that uh, cheese I don't have a webcam installed at the moment you'll notice that I don't have my typical uh, my typical video of my face down here that's because I'm sort of it, it, it created a lot of overhead with developing these videos uh, when I had to overlay a video and I was using FFmpeg to do that. Now I'm going to actually change this in future. I'm not going to be using FFmpeg to actually do the final cut of my videos in future and do my editing. Um, I think that's taking too much time and I'm not delivering enough content to you guys. In future what it'll be is I'll use another tool. I'm, gonna, I'm yet to decide what tool that might be. It might be Caden Live or something like that. But nonetheless, um, cheese you can do webcam stuff with. Okay, now I don't have a webcam fitted to this machine. I will get a webcam eventually, um, but wait and see. Need more subscribers, need more money for, for that sort of thing. So, um, next thing is clocks. Okay, so um, obviously it's going to ask whether it can have my location so it knows <laughs> various things uh, about me. So, let's go in here, let's search for city. I'm in Perth, so the obvious one there. Okay, let's see, it's already that's already there so let's not bother with that let's look up Tokyo now that's interesting I don't know what to go with that so that's not exactly what I wanted it to do so let's just try that again new Tokyo 
Turkey. All right, so that search for PV produced a whole bunch of results. Now, the other one didn't. So there you go. Look at this, PV, a tool for monitoring the progress of data through a pipeline, just like I was talking about before. Anyway, let's continue on with the world clock. So that's kind of not... Oh, there we go. So I had to click on it, then it allows it. So so I can get the time in Tokyo, Japan, or, or wherever it is that I want to. I've got an alarm. Now that's really neat, because I actually wrote an alarm in STL just a while back, because I kind of needed one, or a timer, actually. I wrote a timer, rather. Uh, so that's kind of neat, and it sounds like, or well, looks like to me anyway, that GNOME is really, really coming forward and maturing over time with these sorts of little little features that I wasn't aware about, because I use i3 as my main... Um, my main desktop environment or window manager if you will so yeah you've got this here so I pretty much will say that that will work as it says on the box okay so what else have we got so we've got a contacts list again not sure I'd probably just use evolution for that documents okay so if you've if you've gone through and had a look at some documents so I'll just uh, load up one for example if I go into let's just do writer okay So I'm on the mechanical drive today, so this is why it's taking a little bit long for it to load. Normally I'm on a solid state drive, this is going to be quite quick. So Okay, so that's done. Okay, so let's just save that, and we're going to call it fox. Uh, we won't even bother. Uh, that's fine. It saved it automatically with a file extension ODT. So now if I go into documents, what I'm expecting it to do now is to be aware of Fox. Okay, and I can just double click on or click on that and it'll open it up but it won't open it up for some reason in LibreOffice. I kind of think that's a bit of a downer, but here we go. Let's open in LibreOffice and it's done. It opens. Cool. So that's a nice little workflow there. I actually really like that. Um, so the next thing is is evolution. Now I haven't set up my evolution account I haven't set up my email account so I don't think there's much purpose in going into evolution at this point. But Evolution is pretty much a one-stop solution for an enterprise-level um, emailing, calendaring type client on the GNU Plus Linux system, or any Unix-like system for that matter. Uh, LibreOffice Calc, Draw, these guys. Look, I should probably do a tutorial in and of themselves another time. I've actually learned how to write, uh, due to necessity, uh, macros in LibreOffice. Now, you, some of you guys might know that I write VBA macros as part of my job um, as a programmer type analyst. Um, so I'm kind of used to the basic language, but the object model, certainly not used to in LibreOffice Calc, it's quite unique. should probably look at that sometime. Okay, so maps. Let's take a look at maps. So run that. Okay, of course we're going to grant access this time. Let's see if it centers over Australia. It'd be kind of nice if it did so. And even better if it sent it over Perth. At this point, it doesn't look like it's going to do that. So let's just have a look and see. Perth, Australia. Okay, so it's found it. Let's just click on that. Yep, and we can zoom in. That's really nice. And this is this is the beautiful, beautiful city that I live in. Very grateful to live in the city. Uh, and we can load. That is awesome. I mean, that's just telling me, hey, I actually don't really need um, Google Maps for the desktop. That's just awesome. So really, really, really stoked with that. Okay. So, um, all right. So, I recommend you take a look at that app. That's really, really neat. What's this one? Toggle route planner. Yeah, probably not going to do that today, but that's really cool. I'm going to take a look at that. Okay. So, all right. Rhythm box. Now I showed you that before. Okay. Settings. Obviously, settings is probably going to be pretty low key. Uh, I don't use Bluetooth on this machine, it's not a laptop, so I don't have Bluetooth installed, although that's not an excuse. I could also have, um, on a desktop, you could have Bluetooth in, in principle, having a dongle or something like that. Um, so your background lock screens, notifications. Look, one of the things that you're going to notice here, there's not much, not that much in the way of window management modifications and stuff like that. There is a uh, uh, an extension that you can add uh, to it, some additional settings. Now, if I type settings in here, I'm not entirely confident that that's going to come up, no. So we've just got the basic one. There is an add-on for this. You can take a look through the repository and uh, the software package repository and uh, and see if you can find that. But uh, yeah, um, 
notifications, things like that, a fairly extensive set of uh, notifications and uh, settings for various applications in here. So it's kind of nice. You can choose your region and language uh, nicely from the desktop. Universal access. Those people who have some issues with uh, perhaps uh, reading content on uh, poor contrast screens or that type of stuff, uh, that's there. Uh, online accounts, yes. Now this is, um, you can see here I've actually added my Google account. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just wondering if that means that Evolution actually does have my uh, my next user account uh, on there. Now there's nothing personal on this. This is all just to do with Linux and stuff like that. So, and look at this. It doesn't have anything in there, but it's going to start scanning. That's awesome. Look at that. Now my calendar, I shouldn't have any anything booked in here at all. But yeah, you can see that the calendar works. I wasn't going to go back over this, but as soon as I found out that, that um, I actually had enabled my account for this machine, um, I just thought, hey, let's have a look at Evolution. And you can see Evolution's pretty much got it all. You've got contacts, you've got tasks, you've got the lot. So you don't need these other applications really to manage that. But nonetheless, okay, now there's probably some people in there that we don't need to look at. Okay. So probably going to have to do a little bit of filtering on that one. Um, anyway, so let's move on. Okay, so you've got all these other accounts that you could probably use just there. So that's great. Alright, next. Power management. You could do a bit of power management, a bit of sound management. That's just going to be using your Pulse Audio back in there. So have a bit of a look-see in there if you want to, because uh, you can do some pretty neat things sometimes with Pulse Audio that you couldn't really do with Elsa before. Not a big fan of Pulse Audio, really, personally. But hey, it's there. It's on all distributions. It's kind of like System D. Uh, that's, that's everywhere as well. And this system is based on System D as well. Okay, so let's go back over to the other stuff. Um, so you've got Shotwell, you can take a look at some photographs. I don't have any photographs on this uh, at the moment. I usually have my array of photographs, but hey, maybe we can have a look. Let's import from folder, let's have a look and see if I've got anything in here. Uh, no, we, we could try that. Let's go OK. Uh, yeah, important place. So let's see if we've got any decent images in there. Okay, so you got some videos as well that were imported. It looks like it. So, but and some uh, photos. So you, you can use Shotwell for your uh, your uh, picture viewing enjoyment. So what else have we got? Uh, we got the Simple Scan. That's been there sort of forever. I used to use Xsane, but probably Simple Scan is the way. I don't have a scanner uh, currently enabled for this machine. I don't know if it'll work. Contacting scanner. No scanners available. Kind of not true. I do have a scanner on the network, but it's not directly accessible, most likely, to this machine. Um, preferences, don't know if I can change it. No. So, not for now. Not something I'm going to be looking into right now. Not needed. But just one of these use cases that could be very handy in an office environment. Um, so, obviously, we've been through software. You've got some sundry applications. They're more for problem reporting, that sort of thing. Uh, you got your text editor. I tend to use Vim, but hey, some people like to use Gedit. Now, I think that Gedit might even indeed have a Vim mode. Not sure. I don't tend to use it, but because uh, I really actually prefer the real McCoy. But um, but you do have some pretty nifty little settings in there that you could take a look at, and it could be your text editor of choice. So, for example, I could actually open the little script. Let's have a look and see if we can find a file that I have uh, open. Let's have a look at you. So I've got a screencast kit that I use for each of uh, these runs, and I can just open that up, and you can see it's a nice bash script. Okay, so what else have we got? I think we're coming pretty much to the close here. You've got a to-do list. Again, not probably not necessary because we've got uh, evolution there. Uh, you've got some utilities here. Okay, so archive manager, you could use tar for characters. Probably not much of a replacement of that. That's going to have all your Unicode stuff and that type of those types of things in there. Disk usage analyzer, again, you could probably use FDisk, but it's probably not as friendly. There's probably some other tools. Disks, same story. Uh, this really here is events. This is a document viewer you can view PDFs with. Fonts, probably not going to use that. Help, again, probably online, you're probably getting to use that. An image viewer, hmm, we have um, Shotwell, which we could kind of use for that purpose. Some logs, well, Probably not necessary since we have a, a, a high speed. I've I've installed Vim on here, so it's not really necessary for me. Take a screenshot. Hey, I use Scrot when I take screenshots, but hey, 
I'm going to take a screenshot with this just now. Why don't? Why not? So how about we just? Um, how about I cancel that? I go onto a nice spare platform here, a spare window, and I just take that that uh, screenshot just now. Okay, grab the whole screen. Awesome. So that that means I'm going to save that for uh, for this video production. Okay. And that's pretty much about it. I mean, you could look at the system monitor, but hey, I use HTOP for that. And obviously, terminal, nothing too interesting there to write home about. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this overview of uh, Fedora 27. I actually think Fedora 27 is a pretty compel compelling offering, provided that you, you might be using RPM Fusion, reminder to RPM Fusion. We had a look at that earlier, just in here. Okay. Now, um, I, you know, what would I say about this? I think this is a distro I could, if I had to, get used to. I've got some particular use cases that I, I, I def and a particular workflows that I like. But hey, for the general user, this would be a great distribution uh, offering. I recommend you try it. All right, guys, that concludes this video for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you looked at. Uh, please like and subscribe if indeed that's the case. And uh, if you uh, want to catch more content, I'll have something up pretty shortly. Anyway, guys, catch you now. Bye.